Hey, you guys, it's Kirsten Lee Belt. How are you doing? It's Monday night. How are you? It's so good to see you. Jump in and let's chat tonight. So it was such a very good weekend. We got to spend time with family this weekend a little bit. Ethan Carey, my little grandbaby, he is one week old. One week old as of Sunday morning. So life is very good. So we gathered the family and we had some good old barbecue and had some fun. But um, so life is very, very good. We're in the middle of a snow event in Minnesota. <laughs> Not really. I mean, there's a lot of snow, really wet, amazing like snowman weather. Do you want to build a snowman? This is the place to be right now in Minnesota. I am telling you what. Um, but anyway, my lighting seems really weird on this particular computer, and I'm just wondering why. I don't know why, so I'm going to turn you this way. I don't know what's going on. Hmm, strange, strange. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about it. So anyway, so um, yeah, so I hope you are doing really well. I really, really do. It's Monday night, so I'm going to do a couple of uh, testimonies about the trio because on Friday night when we went live and we made the bread, I didn't, I forgot, I didn't do testimony. So I'm going to throw those in tonight. But I wanted to start out talking about um, three things that I did personally to how to uh, overcome a bad relationship with food. And this is born out of a couple of different comments and things that I've been discussing with people over the last few days. So it's kind of, I always end up creating content. Hello, beautiful Anna. It's so good to see you. Um, con my content generally comes from a place of I'm chatting with people and I realize there's a need to have a conversation about something and I just want to be able to help in that arena. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. just want to make sure I've got that right. So I wanted to talk about that tonight because I feel like this is something that we really kind of struggle with. And it's something that when I talk about, the more that I talk about how I kind of took steps and strides, the more I feel like people, I hope they walk away with a feeling of something was taken off of their plate. I want, I want you to feel like, okay, like number one, I'm normal. You know, number two, I can do this too. Number three, you know, um, I'm actually... I actually have a better track record than maybe I think that I did. And I can actually move forward. I, you know, like, cause we get stuck, right? Our, our wheels get stuck into, you know, like on that hamster wheel, our little, our brains get going and then we, you know, whatever it, and it makes it really hard. So I wanted to talk about this because uh, somebody made the comment. I fell off the wagon and I just have such a bad relationship with food. And I thought, okay. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about having a relationship with food. Hey, Sherry, good to see you. Hello to you, beautiful lady. We're just filled with beautiful women in this little group, aren't we? Anna says the same thing. Um, and so let's get let's get started with that. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to just set the stage. And I kind of always do this a little tiny bit. So I was raised in an Italian family. Uh, a lot of obesity and a lot of type two and a lot of celebration with food, weddings and funerals. Like you knew that you went to the funeral because the funeral was going to have food afterwards. You know, the wake the night before was not going to have food, but the funeral was going to have food. I mean, it's just very cultural, right? And not just any food, like really, 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 really good food, like OMG, right? And so I was just raised in that culture and and so there are, I feel like as I tell my story, what I want you to do is I want you to ask yourself the question, what are maybe some of the things, and you don't have to put them in the comments, um, but you can share this if you think this is going to be helpful for somebody. You can, you know, hit the like button. You can do all those things, but you don't have to answer vulnerable questions in the, in the chat, but I want you to do it in your mind, okay? Or grab a pen. What is it? What is the saying? Trust a long pencil instead of a short memory. <laughs> That's a good one. Anyway. Um, in my raising, we were told it was very important that you eat. Like eating was almost like respect. You know, manja, manja, you eat. Because, you know, somebody went to all this work to make all this amazing food. Um, or just, 
have, you know, have fun, come on, eat, eat like this is fun. And so for whatever the reason, that was just a part of everything. And again, like I said, the food, like, hello, amazing. Um, my father did not write down his recipes before he died. Just saying, just saying, I'm trying to get over that one, right? Okay. Um, but then you're told when you gain weight, because you're eating all the time, you should really probably lose weight. Like, you know, you kind of get that look of, you know, do you guys ever have somebody in your family that gave you the look? And then when you start to lose weight, you're told, oh, don't you be getting too skinny now. And it's almost like out of quote unquote love, they want to sabotage your efforts or whatever. And you feel like, I don't know, you, you can raise your hand about this. Did you ever have a lot of food pushers in your life? Did you have a lot of like food bullies is what I call them in your life. And it's just maybe we don't even realize that we're doing it at the time that we're doing it. It's just something that we do because we think that maybe we're being a good hostess or maybe we think that we're being um, a giving person by, you know, pushing somebody to eat something that they don't want to eat or, um, you know, making people feel like they need to be uh, a part of the party or whatever. And so that's kind of where my background takes me. And I hope that maybe you're able to actually ask yourself some questions about what were some of the messages that are in your head from your childhood that maybe you just have to set aside and realize that, oh, these were kind of like tracks that I don't have to judge them. I can just realize that they're there and move forward. Like there's no, um, it doesn't keep me from moving forward. They don't halt me from doing whatever I want to do. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you. Uh, they don't, um, they don't affect me now. Like I'm not going to let them affect me now is what I want you get, to get to the point of saying. So having said that, uh, these are some of the things that I actually did do. So the whole reason, and I talk about this a lot, the whole reason I started with supplementation in my 40s, and I had never taken supplements before, but the reason why I started to take supplements for my sugars is because I knew I had to do something. My mom would not leave me alone because my dad had died. He died at 63 from type 2 diabetes, and I was only 30 at the time. So my insulin resistance starts in my 20s. I don't do anything about it until I'm in my 40s. And instead of changing out my foods, I go and I try supplements <laughs> because that's the whole relationship with food. How are you going to, what? what are you talking about? How are you going to give up all the food you love? Are you crazy? Like, what's wrong with you? My dad would have said, what's the matter with you? Huh? What's the matter with you? You just, what? You're crazy. So I really never thought actually that I'm, I did not see myself here at 59, eating a completely different lifestyle and talking to you like that's a for real, for real. So what I did was I started the supplementation in my 40s. But then in my 50s, when I decided that I had to change out my foods, I made a very conscious decision, first of all, to try to decide, and this is kind of number one, what was it that I actually liked? Can I repeat saying that again about a long hand or a short memory? Trust a long pencil instead of a short memory, meaning write it down because you'll trust it that because that then you otherwise you're going to forget <laughs> or at least I am. Water break, excuse me. So yes, trust a long pencil instead of a short memory. You're funny, Sherry. So, um, the first thing that I did was I was like, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to do this. And I've told this before, <clears throat> but I actually visualized myself. You're going to think I'm weird. It's okay. Everybody's weird. Standing in front of a potluck in the basement of my church with all the food, because I never took the time. And I don't know if this resonates with anybody, but I'm going to say it anyway. I never took the time to actually ask myself, what are the foods that I liked? Has anybody ever seen the movie, The Runaway Bride? And you know where he says to her, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know what eggs you like. She said, yes, I do. And she realized that she liked the eggs of the person she was with at the time. 
So if that guy liked over easy, she liked over easy. If that guy liked poached, she liked poached, et cetera, et cetera. So she ended up in, by the end of the movie, she takes the time to make all the eggs and she decides exactly what she likes, et cetera. I don't know if you guys know about that, but I felt that way. Like I felt like I approached a potluck with, I just like everything. And I had to go, no, no, actually, Kirsten, you don't like everything. So what do you like? What do you want? And I actually feel like this is a very useful practice for somebody to do. For any one of you, you can sit down and you can say, so what is it that I actually like? Because the next step is, if you can answer that question out of all the food, out of all of the, the different salads and the different entrees and the different desserts and the different side dishes, what is it that you really like the most? And there's no judgment on any of it. It could literally be a salad and it doesn't matter. But then you get to recreate it. And so you don't have to give up that food that you love. You're just going to recreate it with different ingredients. And so you don't have to pretend like you are somebody that you're not. You get to find out who you actually are. Is this resonating with anybody? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Um, it really feels like it's a, um, it's a way for you to really personalize your own journey. Because when she said that, she said, I have such a bad relationship with food. I think that's a lot of us. I think that's a lot of people. Something like 43% of Americans are obese. So I feel like this is very, yeah, yeah, Jean, I know. It's true, right? So true. Yeah, totally. So anyway, ask yourself that question and be really honest with yourself and try not to have any judgment on your own answers, okay? But then you're going to recreate that food. So go to the internet and I do accept it. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Yes, and you too, you too. Oh, yes. Go to the internet. Type in whatever it was that you liked and put keto in front of it. And I know that that's not like a foolproof for everything, but what's going to happen is it will give you a grain-free, sugar-free option for something. So if it's a, if you have a favorite casserole, if you have a favorite dessert, mine was a seven-layer bar, um, <clears throat> whatever it is for you, you can find an alternative and you can find out ingredient trade-outs. That's a part of what I do teach in the Facebook group. So if you don't know about the Facebook group, you can always go to my, my website, kirstenleebelt.com, scroll down to the Facebook blue button, and there's a, a button there for, you can get into the Facebook group, and I do a challenge every month. It's a five-day challenge. It's free. It's just right there in the group. And I will go through some ingredient trade-outs to try to, like, get your brain going, try to get you to think differently about your pantry and your grocery shopping. Um, so that's kind of number one of what I did, and I feel like the last little nugget on top of that is whatever you're doing inside of this conversation for yourself, where you you're maybe writing something down or you're visualizing or whatever, no people pleasing. No people pleasing. You don't you can't do that. You can't you, you have to tell yourself the truth about what it is that you like. Okay. And you don't people please in, in that conversation. And I know that that sounds weird to people who don't know what I'm talking about, to people who this doesn't resonate with. But if it does, if you know, you know, it's kind of one of those things. If YK, YK. Isn't that what we put on our stories? If you know, you know. Okay, so number two, I took it really slow. And I said to this, this girl, I said, I actually went slower than the average bear. <laughs> I did. I took it slow. Because, you know, I don't, I, I feel like there was a part of me that was intentional. And then there was a part of me that was just like, for once in my life, here I am in my 50s, I'm going to have some grace for myself. So I took it slow. And what that afforded me then in the end were really good answers. It afforded me um, a very good intention towards trading out ingredients. It prompted me to actually take the time to make a new recipe, to actually, and everybody's going to be different. My way is not everybody's way on some of these things because you have different personalities, right? So for me, this was really important to me that for once in my life, I took time to listen to myself and began to assess my own things. And a part of this, because 
a big part of this whole conversation now under this number two, number one is very tacto, tacto, what's my word? It's not just tactile because that's touching. Tactical? It's just very logistical. <laughs> we'll just change the word. It's very like, you know, just logistics. You know, think about the food you like, find a new recipe, trade out the recipe. Number two is a little more mind. So in a part of this process, then, as you are starting to trade things out, as you are starting to actually say those words, I have tangible, that's a good one, very tangible. There you go. Thank you. As you're speaking those words out, I have such a bad relationship with food. Take the time to, number one, you have to change the way you're speaking. That's a whole nother, maybe I have to do a live on that. You have to change your words. However, number two, stop and ask yourself, why? Where did that come from? Was it somebody, one person might say, I say because we had food everywhere all the time and we were told to eat and it was very cultural. Somebody else might say, because when I was a child, we didn't have any money and we were very poor. And I was always hungry. Somebody else's story is going to be completely different than mine. That's why this is an inside job. Number two is the inside job. And so you have to ask yourself, why do I have such a poor relationship with food? Oh, you know, this is the way my family did things. This is, you know, my, my mom, you know, whatever. She made us feel really bad if we didn't eat every single bite on our plate. And because, you know, there were starving children in other countries or whatever was said, no judgment on the mom, just the reality of what is now in your brain as a track. So separate that out because I'm not angry with my Italian heritage or with my beautiful, amazing Italian family. Not at all. In fact, I probably don't say that enough. I'm not. Such amazing memories, right? But I just had to come to certain understanding with myself, just how that impacted me so that I can shift it because I have my health to consider because I have like, I want to feel good and I don't want to ache and I want to be down on the floor with my grandbabies and I want to be able to be a size that I want to be. And I want all of these things. I have to just go back and try to figure these things out. So number two, as the inside job, especially in your mind, have a lot of grace for yourself. Stop being so hard on yourself. Because if you can understand that these are childhood, most of the time, these are childhood messages in one way, shape, or form, then you will realize, oh, okay, this is not who I am. This is just a way that I was taught to think. And so if I don't like the way that things are going, I can just change the way that I think. Like be super maybe disconnected from it a little bit. And that can help you. And I talk a lot, um, and I've mentioned this before, but I talk a lot about going through this process of why did that just trigger me? Why? Oh, because I view, because I connect celebration with food. So we were happy and I wanted to eat. Okay. Or, oh, I didn't have something in the house and that made me feel anxious. Or, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of all the different things people have said. Um, there could be things that, and, and they're just your own, but take the time to assess why something made you feel a certain way, anxious, beating yourself up, whatever, and then make a conscious decision to be a scientist about what it is that just happened in your own brain, even if you have to set it aside and do it later because you're in the middle of a work situation or, oh, Chris, I'm so glad. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. I'm glad this is helping. Um, and basically, you can set that aside and then take the time and, you know, like, like literally maybe you write it down and you say, you know, just a note to yourself, note to self, assess why. I felt that way at lunch, whatever. And then go back to it and sit down and choose. There will be no shame on this conversation with myself. There's no shame. I'm going to be a scientist and I'm just going to look at this very scientifically and say, hmm, that's super interesting. 
And I think it's because in that social setting, that made me remember how it used to be when I was a kid and we were at my aunt's house and blah, 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 allow, allow without any shame. And then go, hmm, that's super interesting. And then move on. Do you under, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to people. I hope that helps a little bit. Um, but it, the no shame part is really, really important. And, you know, you can always come back to the replay. And in fact, if you're watching on the replay, tell me where you're coming in from. Tell me that you're on the replay. I would love to know. Um, and anyway, so, but you can always, you know, fat, you know, go back through that again, if that is something that is, you know, really helpful for you. Um, and then realize that when you're making really good decisions about food, I get, I'm going to turn this into four things. So this is going to be number three. I can't do this without number three. I talk a lot about the different foods that I eat and I talk a lot about <clears throat> why, etc. Now you have to understand, so I'm going from one culture of everything is white, white flour, white sugar, everything is, you know, pasta and desserts and amazingness, right? Cannolis, like it's all you got to say is cannoli. Um, everything is so good. And um, I shifted all of that to now the way that I eat, because again, we're, we're viewing everything through the lens of insulin resistance, right? So everything that I eat, the question to me is, Instagram, you're so weird. Everything that I eat now is through the lens of how will this affect my sugars and my body? Because if your insulin is high or your sugars are high, you can't lose weight. So what's the number one thing that women want? They want to lose weight. So if you can understand that insulin is a hormone and that insulin, when insulin and or sugars are high, you can't lose weight, all of a sudden this becomes more important, right? But sometimes we do just want it for our health. Well, I want it for a lot of different reasons because my dad died of type 2 diabetes. So that's one reason, right? Also your mood. That's exactly, and that's actually where I'm going, Chris, with this. So very good. Thank you for the segue. I appreciate that. So the way that you eat, when you start to eat whole foods, it affects depression and anxiety and satiety, feeling that fullness, feeling nourished. Your body can feel completely different. So I eat grain-free, sugar-free completely. I, um, and this is not like a fad. This is not a, for me anyway, this is not a, um, I'm doing this until I get to the size that I want. And then, you know, it's whatever game on. No, this is literally, if I could, if I could tell you how I feel, if I could bottle that and give you some, you would have understanding as to why this is not a struggle inside of me anymore to the choices that I make. So when you eat meat, so this is number three, when you eat whole foods, when you get to that place of doing that more and more and more, and you turn down the processed foods that are actually causing you the anxiety, that are actually causing you to feel depressed, that are actually causing you to beat yourself up, that are actually causing you to regress to self-sabotage, to do all of those things, when you start to do, when, when you, when the scales start to tip and the whole foods is higher and the processed foods and, and those decisions are lower, what you end up finding out is that all of a sudden you're making decisions because this food is actually making you feel so dang good. You're like, whoa, because if you eat meat, let's say, let's say you eat beef, it has almost the exact same matching amino profile as your muscle does. So your body absorbs it very well. Very well. Beef is actually a superfood. I don't know if you know that or not, but it's literally a superfood with the, with the dense nutrition that is in it. I understand there's a war on beef. I'm not confused about the conversations. But the truth is, is that like, just think about it as a woman for one thing. Let's just talk as girls because I'm sure there are no guys watching. But as girls, think about refilling your iron and refilling your like how good you feel. Like if you've had a, a cycle that's been heavy or anything like that, it can actually make you feel so good to feel so boosted in nutrients like that. Um, 
I understand we went into a, you know, a salad culture and we've been told that kale is a superfood. Again, I'm not confused by the marketing and I'm not confused by the industries that are pushed and by the industries that are demonized, but I've got to be able to talk to you just from a nutritional standpoint. No, I'm not a dietitian and I'm not a nutritionist and I'm not a doctor. I'm just an Italian chick that figured stuff out. And it's really important that everybody starts. I want you to assess yourself because when you start to eat whole real foods and you get like as you get rid of as much toxin as you can. You you get rid of like, I don't even eat hardly any, I mean, I don't eat the berries that I want to eat because if I'm going to eat berries, they're going to be organic because the pesticides are so horrible. You know, berries are like the dirty dozen, part of the dirty dozen that you just can't get those pesticides off of them. It's not like I go to a restaurant and I won't eat a strawberry that's not organic. I mean, I don't ask, but I'm just saying in general, I want what I'm eating. I don't want my body to have to fight with it. And can't you feel sometimes your body just, it gets heavy with like, it's trying so hard to like clean out the freaking toxins of the food that we're eating. Isn't it ironic? Sherry says that whole food stores sell more processed foods than whole foods. Oh my gosh. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, it is. And that's, and that's a, it's literally a lie, you guys. The lie is this, that if you are a vegetarian or you're a vegan, or you are you could be either side, you can be a vegetarian or a vegan over here, you could be keto over here. But if you're eating all of the processed foods that says it's vegetarian, vegan, or keto, what are you doing? You're still eating all the processed foods. So ditch the marketing and eat real food as much as humanly possible every single day and literally begin that process of nourishing. But the reason why I say that is because most people don't know the connection between eating whole foods and actually being able to stay on the wagon. She's like, I fell off the wagon. I have such a bad relationship with food. Well, that is true, right? We have to fix those, the mind thing. We have to, it's an inside job, but a part of that inside job is actually pausing long enough to decide you're going to nourish yourself. The incredible edible egg, eating beef, eating whole foods, real foods. Like these are the things that I would focus on. Meat, full fat dairy. If you're trying to lose weight though, sometimes you have to really simmer down on the dairy. I'm just saying, I eat a lot less dairy than I used to eat, but I'm not dairy free. That's just me. Um, eggs, berries for fruit, greens for vegetables, and then I do some nuts and seeds. And out of that, you can create so much food, you have no idea. Because just think, I talk about this a lot in the, in the Facebook group when I do like my pantry day. Every challenge, I clean out my refrigerator. So once a month, I clean out my refrigerator. <laughs> but I take you into my pantry and my fridge because I want you to understand like, oh, you can take this ingredient, this ingredient, and this ingredient and make a cream sauce and put that on chicken. And You know what I'm saying? Like, and feel nourished and feel full and feel very satisfied. And this is not about um, hating your life. This is about loving your life very, very much. I don't know if I'm, oh, I should put out a cookbook, Chris. You're funny. Well, I don't know why I'm so thirsty. Excuse me. Two things. I do have a free PDF on my website, kirstenleebelt.com. And yeah, there's a button that says free PDF. So you can find that there. And I do have just a handful of recipes. But none of them are really my original recipes. They are tweaked versions. They're my versions that I created in the kitchen a lot of times from somebody else, because I'm, you know, it's just like a language. You learn the basics of something and then you create a whole bunch off of a little. That's really what it's like. Miriam says, what about lentils? Are they okay? Heard they are a good source of fiber and protein. Um, they probably are Miriam, but with insulin resistance, I don't do any legumes at all. 
at all. And I know that can be hard, but see, that's where the sometimes, Chris, yes. Um, yep. I don't know if I have to expound on that or not, but uh, no, I don't do any legumes because again, I'm always talking from a position of, I know that there are so many things that are considered good for us. And I also know that God didn't make bad food. He didn't. This is not his fault. <laughs> it's just not. But when you need to heal your body, when you need to turn things around, you have to stop spiking your sugars to that. You just have to. And that the carbs are just too high in legumes. Okay, number four. So number four, what I did was, hold on. Um, I Well, I'll go back to when I was in my 40s. I actually used supplementation. But it was kind of a cheat at the time. Now I consider it essential um, because this is where all the testimonies come from. But in my 30s, I did, you know, I say I never use supplements. Maybe that's a little bit of a fib as I'm talking to you now. But the only reason why I say that is because in my 30s, my girlfriend and I, we actually did, but I don't think in my head I considered it a supplement. It was a, uh, <clears throat> hold on. It ended up getting banned. So it was an ephedrine. So pseudoephedrine, that's pseudofed. So it was an ephedrine. She would know the name. She would remember the name. But it was an ephedrine product that you would take for weight loss. So it really wasn't a supplement. But it was a weight loss product. And it ended up getting banned by whatever. Because, it well, it's, it's like an amphetamine. But um, you could get it at Walmart. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, we would mess around with, you know, that, you know, to try to lose weight or whatever. So, um, you, everybody always says, you know, well, if there was, wouldn't it be great if there was like this magic pill, if there was this, whatever. And, um, you know, when I hit my forties and I started to supplement and I realized, oh, you can actually like help your hunger. You can actually help your cravings. You can actually get on top of things. That was probably my first foray into understanding, oh, I actually, you know, it's not inconceivable to say, what if there was a pill? Oh, and I did that with my, with my hormones, starting that out with adaptogenic herbs and brain fog. That's the purple packet conversation that I have all the time with women. Um, uh, and that's on my website too, under the menopause gut health button. But the purple packet is where I started when it came, they didn't have it packaged looking that way, but that's not the point. But those adaptogenic herbs changed my life because they gave me mental clarity and they gave me um, energy and they gave, they made me feel like I wasn't crazy. Like I wasn't losing my mind. Like I wasn't just like, like my brain wasn't just becoming this old person. And here I am in my forties thinking this. And so the purple packet is what did that for me. But then when it came to the sugars and that's where I talk about the trio all the time, because you literally can change the way that your body functions from the inside out. But we are, we are told that we should put more emphasis on meds and scripts and not on like wellness and wholeness. And we're told to put more emphasis on a food pyramid that was created by an agricultural industry than we are to actually as women, like assess our own bodies. Like, I'm sorry, but I know what it feels like when I have when I'm not anemic, when I have proper iron in my body, if I'm eating red meat, there are times that I don't, you know, like you can crave it because you, um, you know, that maybe you're low. I don't know if anybody else feels that way sometimes, but sometimes you just need to like refill your stores, so to speak. And having really good protein is so incredibly good for you. And so, um, Protein all by itself will help you with your muscle mass and your blood sugars and all that stuff. So the trio, I'm actually going to tell you the two um, testimonies from last week that I forgot to give you on Friday because um, whatever, we were making bread, you guys, we were busy in the kitchen, we were making bread. And so this is one that um, I just love this because somebody was asking me, so if you guys know the, the, the glucose product was out of stock for quite a while it's back. It's back. We're dancing. It's really happy. Um, and if you bought two of them and you need the third one, contact me because I do have 
inventory. So it doesn't, whatever you can do that. But, um, so I, we're, we're making this happen and whatever. And she says to me, um, Oh, by the way, I've lost six pounds. And I'm like, okay. I said, well, that's fantastic. I said, when did you start? And she said, the end of January. And this was like a week ago. And that just made me so happy. So happy that she said that. And then as I'm on my live on Friday and I'm making bread, Carol popped on and she said, I have some good news. I've lost 10 pounds. And I asked her how long that had been. And she said, a little over a month. So right towards like the end of January again. So I love those stories very, 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 very much. Every single week I come and I give you guys the stories because I want you to know. And now if you're on Instagram, you can go to my highlight bubble at the top of my page, at the top of my profile, and there are testimonies there of the trio. And the trio are three supplements that have three ingredients that help with insulin sensitivity. And um, they're on my website, kirstenleebelt.com. Second button, you can look at it yourself. But I just... I'm the only person in my family to have avoided type two in my immediate family. I can't speak for my entire Italian family. Um, but you know, when my dad died of type two, when he was 63, that was very impacting on me. And this is what I know. We've been given a lot of advice through a lot of different institutions. And we are more obese than we've ever been. We're sicker than we're, we've ever been. We are on more meds than we've ever been. And women have such a hard time feeling valued in our society if we don't look a certain way or if we can't dress a certain way or whatever. And what if the key to feeling good, the key to actually your body, if you if, if you can't lose weight, if your insulin and or sugars are high, and you get a key to be able to help get your body, like you get the, the gears grinding inside of you, so to speak, so that you can lose weight, so that you can feel better. There are people that say to me, I literally can feel my sugars coming down. Now, I don't make any claims. I'm just telling you that's a testimony. If you can start to feel good, what if, you know, like it's all connected. Brain fog, exhaustion. When you're insulin resistant and your cell cannot receive insulin and the fuel that insulin was trying to get into it, you are exhausted. And all of that extra fuel gets turned into fat because that's what insulin does. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. So that's why there's this hamster wheel and there's this frustration. And I just, I, this is so interesting to me how many people are insulin resistant and they either didn't know it or um, they just found out. And so that's who I'm here to help. So Chris says, doctors don't know a thing about nutrition, just handing out meds. Well, it's not a part of their curriculum. It's not a part of their curriculum. And now, you know what? In 2024, we should have more hope than we've ever had in our entire life. Like, this should be the year of high, high, high hope. We literally have access to information 24-7. And I don't mean, I'm not talking about the confusing information. I get that. That's also caused a lot of confusion. But I don't think we were very clear before. So I don't feel like it caused the confusion. I feel like um, I feel like the marketing caused the confusion to begin with. That's, you know, it's like um, you should only have to count points. You should only, you know, just eat in a calorie deficit. The, this, that, that. And I get it. It's, it's hard to learn a little bit of a new language, right? I do. I understand that. But it so can be done. And if I can do it, anybody can do it anybody, literally. And that should just be really good news. And then now we have we have access to information that can help us be our own advocates. Because let me tell you, I mean, honestly, if you're sitting here listening to me this long into my chatting, you are probably your own advocate. I'm just saying, it's probably you. 
because you know inside of yourself. I can't even tell you how many DMs I've received that have somebody has said, I knew something was wrong with my body. I just knew it. And so the reason why it happens is because they're testing your blood glucose and they're telling you that your blood glucose is fine, but your insulin can be high for years. I was high in my insulin for decades. It stays high and that causes all this inflammation, all this problems. And, and um, that insulin resistance is such a pickle, but what if you can simmer it down? I'm just saying. It's a, it's really, 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 really good news when it comes to the health front and to helping people feel better. And I know that there are glitches. I get it. I know that there are glitches. Like, like you have to, you have to work on a bad relationship with food. I understand this is not an overnight answer. I get it. But one of the best things that has ever been told to me by somebody who, taking the trio. And by the way, if you do that, Register with your name, check the box for the perks so you can get points for your products. <laughs> Don't miss out on the points, please. Um, and that comes from my father. My father was the son of an, an immigrant. So <laughs> getting a deal, getting the points, get the points, people. Um, my dad was a wholesale guy, man. I'm telling you what, diamond on my ring was wholesale. Anyway, another conversation. I'm getting off track. But my point being that um, one of the best things that somebody said to me was, oh my gosh, since taking the trio, my mind is so calm. It's calming about food. It's starting to calm down. And that's because of the help with your sugars, your insulin, uh, food cravings, sugar cravings, appetite getting your body functioning, that those gears are grinding again, because it's all connected, your liver, your, you know, um, your liver, um, helping to govern your, your hormones, insulin is a hormone, helping to govern the glucose in your blood, helping all of these things work inside of your body. It's such, it's amazing. It's great. So those are my testimonies. But I hope that those things helped you. So just to recap, number one was I truly asked myself what I did, what I liked, and how, what I wanted to recreate for food. And I not, not what anybody else liked, what I liked. No people pleasing. Number two was I took it slow. And one thing I didn't talk about was I used carb blocker a lot. <laughs> That's on my site too. But I did that a lot because I, I just took the process slow. And that's all I need to say for tonight. Um, and I actually took the time to assess what bothered me and why, and I did it without any shame, or right, that was my goal all the time. Then number three was to uh, begin that process of understanding how whole foods, um, like meat and eggs, you know, berries and nuts, the things that, that God gave us to satiate us and to actually help stabilize our blood sugars and to actually help us make us feel full and to replenish the things that we need, like you know, when we're talking about beef and stuff, I actually started to connect why that made me feel good. Like in my mind, it made me feel good in my inside, in my it, um, eating whole food like that can actually help you with your anxiety and your depression. That's so that was number three. And then number four was using supplementation like the trio. And I've done that now for over a decade. So does anybody do I eat potatoes? Sherry, I do not eat potatoes. But what I did was when I first started to eat whole foods, I kind of went paleo. I didn't know it was paleo. You can't read comments here. I know I'm I'm having a hard time with comments, but hold on because I can tell I'm not seeing them all. Please post a link to the supplements for insulin resistance on my Facebook page. I can do that. And you can also go to my, my first and last name dot com, kirstenliebelt.com, and then the second button. But yes, I'll reach out to you for sure. Chris, I'll answer that in just a second. So um, I went paleo. I didn't know what paleo was. I had never even heard these terms. I was very clueless, very clueless. And um, you're welcome. And so what I would do was I did ditch a lot of processed foods and I was really happy about that. And I could tell I was feeling so much better. Like the inflammation was starting to come down and it felt great. But I was eating uh, really like, dates. I was talking about that with a friend the other day. 
doing a lot of dates, medjool dates. Oh, I love medjool dates. Um, because my, my husband's grandmother used to make date pinwheel cookies when we were dating. Man, those were good. But anyway, really, really, really high in sugar. And the other thing I love, because go figure, right? The food that I chose off of the potluck was the seven layer bar. So the dates and then um, the other thing was sweet potatoes. Love me sweet potatoes. So what I would do is I would like reward myself with sweet potato fries, like from Red Robin, <laughs> which I don't, they're amazing. They are so amazing and you can get bottomless. They're so good. But I, I, it didn't take me that long to realize Oh, yeah, this won't be, you know, like, this is not sustainable. Because everything that I'm grabbing, then everything that I'm gravitating towards is basically a sugar fix, just in whole food form. And then what that is doing is that is then keeping me in the cycle. So the insulin resistant cycle is that you eat, and that your, your pancreas is releasing insulin and it's trying to get the fuel into your cell. And it can't because the cell is like, I don't know if it's in protection mode or if it's just so stuffed with insulin and it can't, it says, no, it closes the door, closes the big barn door and says, no. So the insulin then takes all of that extra glucose and it turns it to fat. And be, just because that's what it does, it stores it as fat. And then you have high insulin in your body and you have high inflammation. So if I continue this cycle of the door is closed, so now I'm exhausted because I, I'm not getting fuel for energy, and I am now um, now I'm hungry again because I didn't get any energy, and so my body thinks that it needs to make more insulin, and now I'm hungry again because my sugars have crashed. I'm exhausted again, so I'm going to eat now, and I'm going to crave carbs again. And then I'm going to eat and it's going to try to get insulin into the fuel in the, and the fuel into my cell and my cell is going to say no. And now I'm exhausted again. And so now I'm going to crave, now I'm hungry again because everything is crashing. And so you can't stay in that cycle forever. So that's why I don't eat legumes. I don't eat potatoes. I don't eat and it. And it's not actually anymore. It's not a struggle because I know how I feel. Now, over time, can you become more metabolically flexible? Yes. Yes. And then you can, you know, let's say you're going to have Thanksgiving and you're going to eat potatoes and you're in a place where you know that's not going to send you into a binge and all that good stuff. Sure. Like they're not evil. God did not make food evil. We're just trying to fix something. We're trying to heal from circumstances. And there are many factors to the circumstances and it has to do with the food pyramid and it has to do with how much um, eating out we do and it has to do with our wheat supply and it has to do with, you know, all of the toxins in our environment and we microwave in plastic and our liver, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things and all the seed oils. There's a lot of reasons why we have so much, so many issues that we have to detox and heal from. So now I don't care. Now I don't care. I don't, I don't think about it anymore because it doesn't matter to me. I, you know, I, I don't crave the same foods anymore because now it's shifted. Now I'm more nourished and I'm not, I got off the hamster wheel. Maybe that's a good way to say it. I got off the hamster wheel. And so now I'm not chasing that anymore. I hope that helps. Let's see if I missed anything. Oh, what is a car blocker? So a car blocker. It's a natural way to literally block sugars from hitting your bloodstream. So I use car blocker for years and years and years. And in fact, I talk about it a lot, how it used to be in the coat pockets of my winter coat all the time, um, like when I would trade out my seasons. And so you can sit down and let's say you're transitioning your foods. This is a good way to do this because, again, you want to stop the cycle. So you would take carb blocker as you're sitting down to eat. You can take one, two, or three of them. And again, it's on my site. It's on, I don't remember what button, but I can look it up. KirstenLeebelt.com is the, is the uh, website. Um, but anyway, 
So you would take it and it's literally going to stop up to 500 calories of sugar, sugars from hitting your bloodstream. So you know what it's like. Every one of you know what it's like. Let's say you sat down right now and you ate Cadbury mini eggs. I'm giving you like the worst example because that's going to be like, like you might as well just take an IV of sugar and put it in your arm, right? You know what that feels like where all of a sudden you're eating it and it's super yummy and nummy. And all of a sudden you can feel your sugars go. And sometimes you get that warm and fuzzy feeling and maybe you get a little bit of like, you know, like a little high. You know what I mean? Well, if you can stop that from happening when you sit to eat something like that, you've at least stopped a part of the cycle. You didn't stop the calories. You didn't stop the the sugar from being bad for you. <laughs> you didn't stop the food dyes, but you stopped. You put a ceiling on the spike. Does that make sense? I'm going to just make sure which button I'm talking about. So that's what that is. And I just did it for a long time. I probably haven't used Car Blocker now for, it's probably four or five years now. Probably four, four years. And I used to always keep it on me because that was one way that I wanted to be able to navigate social settings. Easter is coming up. This is a really good example of what that's like for people. Um, you know, maybe you know that you're going to be, you know, um, around people that um, it, maybe it's not just about you and your, you know, you could do it, but you've got a lot of food pushers around you. And I just didn't want to, I just, I just wanted to be able to make my own decisions in my own moment. That was my own empowering. That's what the car blocker is. That's probably too long of an answer. Let me see. Oh, you are welcome. You are welcome. And I know I'm missing stuff up there, but that's okay. Um, I think it's going to be on the second button that says the targeted list of supplements for insulin sensitivity. Let me double check. Yes, it's on there. So first button is my personal message. Second button has the list. So anyway, it was so nice hanging out with you guys tonight. I just really wanted to address that because like I said, that's been become a common conversation with some people about um, just really needing to navigate the emotional connection with food. And it's a journey. And I just want you to really like, if you don't take that journey, if you don't, if you don't allow yourself some time to take the journey, how, let me say it this way. You might as well take the time to be on the journey. What else are you going to do? The time is going to pass anyway. Three years from now is still going to be three years from now. Why not? You don't even have to tell anybody you're doing it. You can make your own assesses, assessments. You can make your own assessments all by yourself. You can make your own notations in your own mind. You can, you can have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with yourself, all by yourself, you and God, and you can say, listen, Lord, I need help. I need to be able to see why certain things are bothering me, or I need to be able to understand where that came from. And I know that you aren't shaming me, so I'm going to stop shaming me, but I'm going to get down to some real answers, and then I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to enjoy my life. I thought I had to stop being a foodie completely. I thought I had to, that, like, that can't be a part of my identity anymore. That's, that's stupid. Of course I can. I just do it differently now. And now I just get to do it in, like, helping people. So food is torturing you. Not kidding. Yeah. So, well, so Kathy, what is, what does that mean to you? Like, does it torture you? thinking about it all the time? Is that what you mean? Or do you mean that it's torturing you because, because of what you're eating, it's making you, your health worse? Because I could see that going a couple of different ways, you know, and it is, you know, it's a mind game, you guys. But don't feel bad about the fact that it's a mind game. I mean, everybody's got something that they're working on. It doesn't matter who you are. 
you know, and when I hit my fifties, you know, I just had to be able to make decisions that were better for how I wanted to feel in the future, you know? So that's really important. Do I help people with mindset? Yes, I do. I do. Like, um, I talk about a lot in the Facebook group. That's one of the places I talk about it. I have done one-on-one, -on -one, you know, sessions. Um, and yeah, sometimes I chat with my customers in the background quite a bit. You're a sugar addict, all of the above, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Well, so Kathy, <clears throat> that is very, um, I was a very much of a sugar addict in my forties, very much. So that was my, that was my deal for sure. And I think that if somebody had come along and said to me, you have to give up sugar right now and, um, you know, whatever, I, I don't think I would have done it. I, I don't think I, my idea of a good time in my thirties was on Sunday afternoon, you get a bag of, you know, snacks, ice, snicker bars, and <laughs> you know, read the newspaper. Um, and my go-to uh, binge food was binge. My go-to, like, you know, whatever junk food would be like theater popcorn, buttered flavor popcorn with milk duds. And if you eat them at the same time, it's like chocolate caramel popcorn. And um, so I don't think that I would have ever thought to myself, I'm going to tackle sugar right away. Thus the going paleo and still eating all the dates and the sweet potatoes, because I wasn't thinking in those terms. Now, I will say that when you, I mean, you can, you can look for yourself at, so you're not on, you're not on Instagram. I do have a Facebook group, Kathy. So I don't know if you're in the Facebook group, but if you are, there are some testimonies at the top and um, you can actually begin to supplement and make a difference in the way that your body is responding to sugar and the difference in, in the way that your body is, is responding in its appetite. And that's the trio that I talk about. Um, but also too, and people have different thought processes about going cold turkey or not cold turkey and all that stuff. And I really do feel like, cause you use the word torture and it's like, if something is super tormenting, um, it's such an inside job sometimes. Um, I think that that's why I didn't go cold Turkey because I wanted success. I, this was for me now I'm talking about for me and you guys can take it for whatever it's worth. I actually wanted a result. And I don't think I knew the fullness of the result that I wanted, but I wanted to do it in a way that it was going to be for me. I actually wanted answers. I didn't want a quick fix anymore. I was getting to, I was already really ticked off with the, um, the establishment of, you know, the medical situation, um, giving us, in my opinion, from my studies, misinformation or bad information about insulin resistance. And, you know, because I, I wanted to know why did my dad die with all a lazy Susan full of meds and he was 63 and that really bothered me. And I wanted to know, you know, why are we being told that we should, you know, eat a certain way and all this stuff. Um, your bread shrunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your bread shrunk. I'm sorry. I know. I know that that's the egg white protein bread. It's a journey with that too. Um, but going back to that, I, I feel like I just in my 50s decided that I, I, I didn't want a quick fix anymore. I didn't want to buy an expensive program. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to go to meetings. I didn't want to um, just buy into the latest marketing whatever because I already was kind of maybe waking up to the marketing from the medical establishment. And so it was like, 
I, I started studying Maria Emmerich and I'm like, this is really making sense to me now about all of the marketing and all of the, the, the lies that were told that, you know, cereal is good for you. No, it's not like what a lie. And so I felt like I just wanted the truth. And because I wanted the truth, I wanted the truth for me. So um, I feel like when I started to switch out my foods, I did switch out the sugar things first because that, that was my kryptonite. So I encourage you to do the same thing. Um, go on my website, kirstenliebelt.com, get the free PDF. It has a sugar-free chocolate pudding in there. You won't be sorry. It's high protein. It's, you know, you can use monk fruit or erythritol or stevia. Um, and you're making it with egg whites, which I know sounds crazy, but it's like going to be the best chocolate pudding you've ever had. You can make it in the blender. Learn how to switch out something like that and then make sure that it's high protein so that you can feel good and full. And um, if you have something like that to start with, it's a start anyway. It's a start. Let me just see here. My arm is in the way. Sorry. You need to dump your dates and sweet potatoes. Oh, Miriam. Yeah. So high in sugar. You love sweet potatoes. Your new goal is to stop eating them. It, I love sweet potatoes. <laughs> love sweet potatoes. Really high in sugar. Really high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. Anyway, just potatoes in general. Um, and again, because you're insulin resistant, if you're insulin resistant, the rules are different. That's why. Um, lose weight. Yep. Lose gain, lose gain. Yep. And that was me like my entire life. The picture that I pull up in my web, my uh, webinar thingamajig that I do in the, in the Facebook group is from when I was about nine or 10 years old. And that's when I first was told to start dieting. Yep. So, and I do the, uh, the, um, the five day challenge starts April 1st. Why is, why some are insulin resistant do well on plant-based and others just do carnivore. I just found out what's best to eat if insulin is super high and PCOS. Um, it's a good question. For me, I think it's probably a belief system. I, I believe that we've been lied to and told that plants are superfoods when they actually aren't as nutritionally dense as meat. And I believe that meat plays a role in hormones. I'm not talking about, you know, okay, like we buy grass fed beef, like, and all the good stuff. So I'm not, whatever. That's another conversation. But point being, I just think that there's a more nourishing factor to eating nutrient dense foods. And the thought process I, I, yeah, I don't know if I know why somebody else would go plant-based, but it does. But either way, if you're eating a bunch of processed food, all in the name of vegetarian, vegan, or keto, you're doing it wrong and you're not doing yourself any favors and you can end up just as sick. Sick, not meaning sick, <coughs> sick, meaning insulin resistant, high blood pressure, all of the things, you can still end up with that. Yeah, and I'll and for PCOS, you know, Dr. Kiltz, K-I-L-Z, I think. He's a fertility doctor out of New York. He has his patients go carnivore. Carnivore for PCOS. Straight meat. It's very nourishing. God gave us animals to nourish our bodies. I'm just telling you. It's just the way it is. Cavemen were not running around trying to find all of the lettuce that they could find to nourish their bodies for strength and iron and vitamins and energy. And if you have to supplement your diet just because you can't get enough in your food all the time, I understand that we supplement because our soil is bad. It's another conversation. 
I do supplement. I supplement a lot, but I do it for different reasons. Not because I'm not supplementing because beef is low in, in vitamins. If that makes sense. Uh, let me see here again. Sorry, my arm. You crave it. I know Kathy. I know Kathy. Listen, I'm telling you the glucose product that is in the trio is the one is, is it helps with cravings, right? You get in another one of the products of the trio, you get your liver running so that your liver can help your glucose levels in your blood. You get your metabolism going. That's the third product so that you can, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, there are things that you can do to minimize while you are making these changes. I understand you. I get it. I would go salt, sweet, salt, sweet, salt, sweet, salt, sweet. Just saying, I get that. I understand exactly what that is. You had to take it one meal at a time, Jacqueline. You tried to eat with better choices for that meal. Then I moved on to the next meal and so on. That is really, really a lot of what I did. I didn't make any hardcore decisions. That's it. Starting Monday, I'm never eating sugar again. I never did any of that. Because again, I needed to like assess. I wanted real answers for me. You see here. High insulin cause hair loss like it falls out to the touch. Eat pudding all day. Yes. Joey, you're so sweet. Can you go meat and eggs? I'm going to, I have to think about that one. Meat and eggs for a long time and then become insulin sensitive. Well, I think that becoming insulin sensitive is a process of healing your, your body from constantly spiking your sugars and making your body, your pancreas release more insulin, more insulin. So if you're eating meat and eggs, you are really, you will always re, re, release insulin when you eat because that's a part of the process, but you won't release that much. You won't need to release that much. So, I mean, if you're just eating meat and eggs, I think that Dr. Kiltz would say that's exactly how you reverse things because then you literally can put your body into a healing mode and you're also putting your body into a fat you're using fat for fuel and not sugar because the first fuel that your body wants to use for the first fuel that your body wants to use for energy is sugar. So if you have any sugar in your bloodstream, it's going to use up the sugar and you never get to the fat. And then the second one is uh, glycogen and glycogen has a 20 minute lifespan in your muscles. And then um, if it go, then if you don't have, if you don't get into fat burning mode, you will burn lean muscle. And that's why I talk about like eating and, you know, eating a lot of, um, a lot of protein, making sure that you're getting a lot of protein. Somebody asked me about if there's a protein powder. I do actually, there's, um, I'm, I apologize if you're not on here anymore. Somebody had asked about if I, if I use a protein powder, I don't do protein powder a ton, but when I do, um, I have, if you are on my website, type in pod P O D there are pods that are chocolate, strawberry, or vanilla, and they are sweetened with stevia, and they are really good ingredients. And I'll even take a pod, open it up, and use half of one, like, and mix it with cottage cheese. It's really yummy. Isn't there a detox need for green plants? I don't know what you mean by that. And then you asked about hair loss. I don't know if high insulin is causing the hair loss. I don't think I know that one. Yeah, carnivore can be, there are different levels of carnivore. So it can also be eggs, chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are different levels. Maria Emmerich teaches it really well. Oh. So my video froze for her in Australia. Oh, you're so sweet. It will be available. So you can be watching me on the replay right now. You're so sweet. What is the link to my website? It's my name. So kirstenleebelt.com. So you can see it right on the screen right there. Kirsten Liebelt. No space in between my name, my names, my first and last name, and then just add .com on the end. And that's my website. And the first button is my personal message. Um, 
And then the second button basically is just talking about like the trio. I start with that for insulin resistance. Um, but for those who are looking for like the purple packet, if you're looking to deal with brain from menopause and gut health button, um, that's what I started with for my brain fog in my 40s. And then basically I started to study how adaptogenic herbs help your adrenals and your adrenals balance your hormones. And so I went into my 50s set up really well because of that, but I was super naive and I didn't know it was going to do that. I didn't know any of this was going to do anything for me, whether it was for my sugars, for my brain fog, for my hormones, for any, like, I didn't know nothing. I was eating theater popcorn and milk duds and <laughs> sugar addict. I was not thinking anything other than that. So anyway, people speak of detoxing the body. So green veggies are needed. Like liver, gallbladder, do you think keto is harmful? I do not think keto is harmful at all. Um, I'm not against greens, of course. Um, but I'm going to be really honest. I think that a lot of people have a lot of issues with um, IBS and things like that, digestive issues, um, because of a lot of different, let's say, raw veggies or whatever. Um I like, uh, I have a good organic powdered green that, I mean, I'm just looking at it's on my counter right there. Um, and I like that because number one, it's organic. Number two, it's very, very potent because it was harvested at peak, right? And then it's powdered. And so that's on my website too. But I, my daughter used that for going back to liver. Um, she had gallstones during her first pregnancy and was it her first second, second pregnancy. And so she did use greens to create more bile because she did have to keep everything going. And so she used, she used the, um, from the line, she used digestive enzymes, greens, the liver support. I'm trying to think if she, I think those were the three that she used. And, um, and then she immediately went keto and she turned it all around and never had to have gallbladder surgery. And because they were like, oh, just get surgery. She's like, no, I'm pregnant. I'm not going to do that. And she never did. So praise God. Praise God. And it's really important to do something for Southern California. Good to see you. Oh, man. Jealous. We've got like, you know, tons of snow going on right now. Yeah, my daughter had a really great testimony with all of that. She just, you know, she's amazing. I don't think she's on here, so I can talk about her. She's just amazing. She's uh, She just had her third baby last a week ago, and it was a home birth. And um, she, she chose to do a home birth with her first in 2020 because of the shutdowns. And she said, I'm not going to go to a hospital where they won't let me have my husband. And so she was choosing an, um, an, a non-medicated birth not knowing what labor is like. And she, it just was such a beautiful experience and it worked out so well. And so she's done the other two that way as well. So her journey has forced her into study just like mine did, but for different reasons. So she had to find out for herself that gallstones are uh, often, it's because of like high insulin, high cortisol or high estrogen. And she had all three going for her when she was pregnant. So she had to turn things around. And so, like I said, she immediately went keto and in, incorporated the greens and did the things that she needed to do. And man, takes a lot of strength to do that. So I'm really excited that she did that because I didn't raise her that way. I raised her, you know, with a 50 pound bag of white flour. Like that's how I was raising my kids. So I am not in Alberta. I'm in Minnesota, Minnesota, but we just got a bunch of snow. Like we haven't had snow all winter and now, um, winter showed up, <laughs> winter showed up like, uh, Sunday. Like it's crazy. Maybe we had a little bit of snow last week, but barely anything. And then now we're like, oh my gosh, just keep snowing and we're going to get some more, but that's okay. Because seriously, like what's not to love next week is April unbelievable. We're going to slide right into spring, never having had a very hard winter. And um, 
this has just been the El Nino that hit us this year was just a real blessing. Just a real blessing. I was saying to my husband, I don't feel like I'm coming out of winter feeling like I have to recover from anything. <laughs> I don't have to recover from it. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's good. So literally we go into April. And so that's going to be my segue then. Next week, April 1st starts the five-day challenge in the Facebook group. If you haven't been a part of one before, get into the Facebook group. Go to kirstenleebelt.com. There's a Facebook blue button. Get into the Facebook group. If you want to grab your trio beforehand, you can, but you don't have to. Um, but get yourself encouraged. Get yourself, get some tools in your toolbox. Um, and if you have been a part of one before, do it again, because repetition is the mother of all skills. I'm just going to, it's like uh, one of my favorite pastors, he says, I have one sermon. It's just 500 hours long. So I have one message. It's just 500 hours long. So getting something to be a part of you, a part of your stream of consciousness, so to speak. I don't know why I just use that term, but just a part of your thought process on a regular basis. I'm telling you, it's really helpful if you can hear things over and over again, because you're, you're working to rewire some of your thoughts and some of your patterns and some of your belief systems. I talk about meat. What about fish? Fish is great. Wild caught, of course. Amen, Miriam. And like in, in Minnesota, uh, well, I'm sure everywhere, but when it comes to shrimp, um, you don't want farmed shrimp. Uh, I found ones that said they were wild caught off the Gulf of Mexico. And that's what I have been buying for shrimp. Not whatever. I just have some in my freezer right now. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, fish for sure. You know, it's funny you say that I should mention seafood in general way more than I do. Um, I don't think about it because I, I don't know. Um, in Minnesota, growing up for me, seafood was red lobster and or you went to the cabin and you fished. And we never had a cabin and my dad never fished. So I was never, we didn't eat a lot of fish in my home, but I should bring that up more often because of course, wild caught fish, fantastic. So can you do on a low income? I don't know, Joey. I think it depends on what that means for other people, but you can always like message me or something and I can tell you, or just go to my, go to my website and you can determine that on your own for sure. And they do PayPal for people, but you know, everybody's different, um, for sure, for sure. So anyway, all right, you guys have a super good night. That was really, really fun. And uh, if you ever need anything, my DMs are open and I hopefully will see people in the group. Don't forget, there's like a free PDF on the site. There's the Facebook group. Um, just my whole goal is to resource you as much as humanly possible. And like, let's turn things around. You're welcome, Kathy. Um, turn things around so that, ah, I just want to beat the narrative. I want to beat the narrative. I'm really, really tired of things being demonized that should not be demonized and people just living sick. You don't have to live sick. You can live with energy and love your life and love the food that you eat all at the same time. So, all right. So have a super blessed night. See you guys later. Bye. See you later, you guys.